Do you have enough friends in your life? Because if not, all you have to do is make an apple pie and people will quickly show up like this. Hey, it's me. Guess what? I made an apple pie. Hey, you guys want to come up? Oh, you better make sure you're dressed. You know what? There is nothing like homemade apple pie and don't be afraid of the crust because mine is an easy oil crust and, I'll, and I'm going to make that first. So we'll start with the crust. You're going to take uh, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour into a bowl and we're going to add uh, two tablespoons of sugar and a half teaspoon of salt. Okay? Now we're going to just stir that up just a little bit. Okay? And now we're going to add a half cup each of milk and oil. Now I'm, I always use 1% milk, keeps it lower in fat. You can use uh, full fat milk if you want. And I'm using extra light olive oil into the mixture, like that. And you stir this with a fork. It seems to stir easier with a fork than with a spoon. So, and you'll see how quickly this becomes sort of a ball. See how it gets thicker and thicker? This is so much healthier than the ones with shortening and butter and stuff like that. Okay, so once it starts to form into a shape, we just transfer it to your work surface. It doesn't have to be floured. Okay, there, you just get all of that out. Now you can see it's a sticky dough, and that the, this is sticky, but the thing is you can actually press this dough into a pie pan, but I have an easier way. So we're just gonna get it to kind of hold together. Now this is going to include the top and bottom crust, so we're going to cut it into two. I always spank my dough. You better be good. Make a good pie. All right, so we'll cut this in just about half, maybe a little bit bigger on one half. This looks just a tad bigger. And we're going to shape both of these into a five inch disc, okay? This one's going to be the top crust. It's a little bit smaller. Just into a rough five inch disc like that, okay? Now we're going to put this, this one here into some wax paper and it's going to go aside for a bit, okay? Just kind of fold it up, cover it up. All right, we're going to set that aside and this one also shapes into a five inch disc, okay? Same thing, just kind of shape it like that. So that's going to get you started to the rolling process, all right? All right. The easiest way to do this is to roll it between wax paper. So I'm going to take two sheets of wax paper, one on the bottom, one to the top. And again, like I said, you can take this and pat it right into your pan, but this is much easier. You flour the wax paper just a little, put this on your floured wax, a little bit on the top so it doesn't stick. Ah, wax paper. This is such a saver for this kind of uh, pie crust. Okay, you take a rolling pin and you just roll like that. Now, if it starts to move, you can see that the wax paper is going. Here's my little trick, okay? I just take the corners like this and I lean against them. See, like this, I just, just lean against it and then you can roll away like that. And it's not going to go anywhere. So you ro you, I take all four corners like that and just keep rolling. And if, if the wax paper shifts off, you can just lift it off and put it back. And you roll this as wide as the wax paper will allow you. And it's 12 inches wide. So you just keep going till it's at the end of the, uh, get a little extra flower here, till it's at the end of the edges of the, the width of the wax paper. Okay, now I'm gonna put this into the pie pan. Now I'm using a deep dish pie pan this is a lot of apples in this pie. So here's my pan, okay? Now you can, uh, this generally will just lift off like that. If you floured your wax paper, it'll just lift off. If it breaks, you can piece it back together and you just drape this into your pie pan, okay? Like I said, this can be padded in. It's a very uh, sturdy dough, so you just kind of get it into place and then you just start to pat it in like that. Make sure you don't make any holes, okay? And I just go around like this with my fingers and just, if there's any air, I just kind of let it out like that and just keep going. Now, you can see this is not a perfect circle. So 
The good thing ab about this kind of uh, dough that you can pat is you take off the excess like this and you use that to fill where you don't have any crust because it's never going to be a perfect circle. See? So if you can see against it's beige and beige, I know it's hard to see, but right here there's not enough crust so you just take what you cut off and you just kind of uh, pat it back in. Okay, so there it is. As you can see, it's not perfect. Some places it's nice lined up, some it's, not, it's a little ragged, but that's okay. It's all going to get covered up. I just cut off whatever was extra, patched it in, so that's, that's ready, that's all set. So now we're going to put this in the fridge along with the, the top crust, which is now that five inch disc. We're going to put these in the fridge while we work on the filling, but do not put this inside the pan. Keep it separate. These go to the fridge and uh, we'll make the filling next. Okay, so you just clean off your work surface a little bit and make sure that you preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and now we're going to make the filling. Pretty easy also. You need a really, really big bowl, by the way. I'm using a bowl this size and the reason is that this recipe uses three pounds of apples, okay? These are Granny Smith apples and they're my favorite apples for apple pie. But what I'm going to do is put the dry ingredients together first and the reason is once the apples are cut they won't sit around as long and maybe turn brown. So into a really, really big bowl you're going to put three quarters of a cup of sugar and three tablespoons of tapioca. And let me show you, this is the minute tapioca available in stores. If you can't find it, you can use flour, but I think this is better. And the thing is, read, if you read the package, you'll see it, you have to shake it. It opens up here on the side. You just co cover, it, cover that opening up with your thumb. And you have to shake this before you measure it, which I did. So make sure you shake the tapioca and um, three tablespoons, okay? And a half teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Now I know that's not a lot, but I don't want this to be a cinnamon pie. I want this to be an apple pie where you really taste the apples. So that's the dry ingredients. And so you just kind of combine that well into the big bowl. Okay, so this is all stirred up. We set this aside. And now we're gonna work on the apples. Uh, three pounds of apples, when they're really, really big like this, it only takes like five of them to make a pie. So the bigger the apples, the less work there is. There's less apples to peel and stuff. So, But it is kind of a messy job. So if I had gloves, I would use them. But I forgot my gloves again. If I had them, I would use them. But thank you. All right. So we're going to peel. Can I have another glove, please? <laughs> Thank you. Well, they're pretty colors, but they, they, they uh, fall apart easily. Okay. All right, so you need a good vegetable peeler. If you, uh, if you have one, this is the kind to use. We're going to um, basically peel the apples, quarter, and core them. So. Now, my dad used to be able to peel a whole apple like this all in one piece. Let's see if I can live up to his expectations here. I think I can do it. Look at that. I'm doing it. That's for you, Dad. All right, so each apple is going to get peeled. What I like to do is actually peel them first because the less air they're exposed to, uh, the better for the, the least amount of time. So I'm going to peel all the apples and then I'm going to cut and core them. Okay, here is the last one. So, like I said, peel all the apples first and they won't be exposed to uh, too much air for too long. Now you take another sharp knife and you do this with each apple. You cut it in half and then quarters. And then you take a small knife and you just uh, core the apple like that. So here's the last one, whoops, here we go, here's the last one, look at all these apples, okay. Now this, uh, three pounds of apples like this uh, should make about nine to ten cups of apples and I'll just go ahead and measure them just to give you an idea. But the cutting is really easy, basically you take that big knife again and here's how I do it, I just, oh hello, whoops, look what happened, okay. So I just cut it. Uh, in half like that and usually three cuts. One, two, three. Now this looks to be about four cups, right? So that's four cups. That's going to go in the bowl. 
and we'll do the rest. Okay. All right, so this is like another four cups, looks like, right? So that's eight cups. Let me move this over. That's eight cups in there. And then this should make just to like another cup or so. And you can see that the apples didn't get too brown, you know, because I did the dry stuff first, so they don't sit around and get brown. You want to do about one inch pieces. There's your nine to ten cups of apples. And now we just stir this really, really well. You're going to get under there and try to coat the apples as much as possible. And just keep kind of turning, almost like folding them, so you get them covered as much as possible. You know, people have apple pie different ways. You know, some people have it a la mode with ice cream. Some people actually put cheese on pie, a slice of like cheddar cheese on pie. You know what I have with my pie? Another piece of pie. Okay, this appears to be all mixed, so you can just check by looking at the bottom of your bowl. And you see there's nothing down there. Pretty much all, maybe another couple of turns. Just make sure the bottom of the bowl is pretty clear. But you can see the apples are all nicely coated. It doesn't look like it's going to fit into that, that uh, pie dish, but it is. So I'm going to go get it out of the fridge, and we'll put this pie together. So now you take both your pie crusts out of the fridge, and we're going to fill the pan. And this is a lot of apples, and it's going to make a big pile of apples, but they will cook down. So just kind of carefully make a big pile here. And then I always uh, clean out the bowl really well and get all the rest of the, uh, the little tapioca and the juices and everything. Okay? All right. So there it is. Now you can kind of, uh, I, I, I could do this with my hands. You just kind of move it around, kind of fill in all the little spaces, maybe press it down just a little. And that looks pretty good. All right. Okay, so now what would normally happen, a lot of recipes, they start dotting pieces of butter on there. I don't use it. You don't really need it. It tastes great without it. So, so now it's time to put on the, the top crust, okay? And we're going to prepare it the same way we did the bottom one. So I'll set this aside. And we're going to do the wax paper. And uh, you cannot reuse the other wax paper, so you have to do this again with other paper, okay? Put the other piece right here. All right, so you take that five inch disc, put it on here, flour the top a little bit, put the top wax paper on, and you roll this out, same way you did the other one. So you peel off the, uh, the top wax paper, and I'm going to put the pie back here. Take this off, okay, same way, just peels off, lay this on top, yikes, okay, and again you can uh, patch and fix whatever, you can see I didn't put it on, I never put it on perfectly straight, but you do the same thing, you cut off any extra over here and you can use it to patch. And you don't have to fill every single hole because they need a little, the apple pie needs a little uh, air, you know, a little ventilation. So now I'm gonna go around, cut off all the extra. Okay. There. Just kind of secure that to the edge. And what I like to do, rather than flute, I just like to take a fork and just kind of give it a little pinch at the end. See that? Just like that. We're going to brush the top with a little bit of milk. And this is going to help for the crust to brown. So just take kind of a soft brush. If you don't have a soft brush, I've actually done this with a paper towel with like the, the little end corner piece of a paper towel. Anything just to put a little milk on here. I don't even think it takes maybe a half teaspoon of milk. Okay. I do not put it on the edges, only on the, the whole body of the pie, but not on the edges because you don't want the edges to brown any more than they're, than they're going to. So once you put the milk on, then you sprinkle about a tablespoon of sugar 
And again, try to avoid the edges. So I just kind of cover the edge like this, and I just kind of sprinkle the sugar across, turn it, cover the edge, sprinkle it across. Same thing like this. See, my pie's not perfect, but it's, it's going to taste perfect. And that's all that matters. Okay, so that's it. This is going to make it a beautiful brown crust. Okay, and again, try to avoid the, the, uh, the edges. And also make sure that you don't have too much sticking up here. You may want to push down these apples. If you have a little bit of raised apples on the edge, and I'll show you why in a second. Okay? Okay. The one last step, you take a little sharp knife. I don't like to do this with a fork. I like a sharp knife. And you poke a, a, about a dozen or so little slits into the pie. And I, I like to poke and, and twist it a little bit just to get some air in there. And the purpose for this is so that you don't steam those, the apples don't turn into applesauce. They need some ventilation. So I just kind of poke around. And that's why this is okay because it has some openings already. So I just make some little pokes like that, about a dozen or so. And then I also take a little bit out of the center. I, t I cut like a little, I don't know, about a half inch circle out of the center to let that steam escape so the, the uh, apples will hold their shape. And now it's ready for the oven, so there's one more thing to do. And I'm going to put a pie ring on here, and this is going to protect the edges, because it's a hot oven, 400 degrees. It's going to protect the edges from burning. Um, if you don't have, I think these cost like $5. If you don't have one, you can make one out of foil, but it is not easy. Now you can see why I said push down any apples, because if you have apples sticking up on the edge, the ring is going to sit on top. The ring you want on top, you want the ring to sit down and cover up that edge, okay? Now it's ready for the oven. Just in case it spills over, because it can spill over, you put it on a baking sheet like this. Try to do it here. Put it on a baking sheet into your 400 degree oven. There you go. For 50 minutes. And then we got apple pie. Okay, here's a pie that I made last night, and of course I had to make another one because it takes 50 minutes to bake, at least three hours for it to cool. So um, if you're tempted to cut the pie before it's really, really set, or if your filling is a little runny, they make this thing called a pie gate, and you adjust it to wherever you cut your pie, and once it's cut, you just put this in there and it pushes back the filling and holds it in. So it's kind of cool. All right, now here's my feeling about apple pie. I have this theory, and hear me out on this. You have apple pancakes for breakfast, you got your flour, you got your milk, you got your apples. My pie has flour and milk and apples. Apple pie for breakfast. You know I'm right. All right, here it comes. I have no idea what to expect here. Look at this. Look. Oh my God, look at this. Look at those apples. Is that the most awesome apple pie ever? Look at it. I'm telling you. You people tell you, you can, you can do this. You saw it wasn't that difficult. The crust is easy. You can never buy anything like this ever anywhere. Time for breakfast. Oh, look at this. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Uh-oh. I think we can all agree that everybody's favorite comfort food is mac and cheese, but you don't have to eat the one in the box. With my recipe, it only takes 20 minutes to make a creamy, delicious pot of macaroni and cheese, and mine, low in fat, no butter, and only four ingredients. Would you rather be better looking or know how to make perfect hard-boiled eggs? Well, I can help you with the eggs. I'm going to show you how to make foolproof, perfect hard-boiled eggs, no green ring, easy to peel, every time.